This is the room that we are using to turn into a home theater. Uh, it was previously used as a gym and the dimensions are 4.1 meters from here till here and it goes down to 5.1 meters from here to here roughly. So my goal is to put a projector screen right over there, 120 inches, I felt was the most comfortable for the seating position. And so I'll talk to you later about the decision to choose which projector to take, uh, which screen to take, the screen color, company, and prices of everything, including this work. So I've already purchased the bracket over here and I've begun wiring it in. And I wanted to show you this half-baked job before it gets closed up today. And so what we did is I got the HDMI wire. This was actually one of the most expensive things on, in the project. And I routed that up from that hole over here and down through that pipe. Now, I was not sure if I wanted to put it behind the wall simply because it's going to be uh, plastered and then finished again. And so the next thing that I've done is that I've brought down a electricity cable from the bottom here all the way up and that goes through here to feed that plug which will eventually be placed behind so that the projector can sit on it. Hi everyone, I just wanted to show you what came of what we did uh, since the last filming and uh, I know there's not a DIY channel so I didn't go over the painting. Uh, here I have that little bucket of paint. And so the furniture came in, it was put in place and I have this little uh, table here that's gonna have uh, the AV receiver, the consoles and such. Um, this thing, although it's a little annoying, um, it'll do for now, I had it painted as well. Uh, it's not the best job in the world, in fact, uh, I really do not like it. But we cleaned it up a little bit, made sure that it looks half decent. Uh, we cleaned up the bottom part here as well, so I can get ready to get mounted on a little bridge. We put like a aluminum and wood bridge so that it would hold into place uh, on the gypsum board. And yeah, that's what it looks right now. And I'm just waiting for the device to ship. And once it ships, uh, I'll be installing, calibrating, and putting the screen up here. So this is the finished room now with the screen installed, the gray screen from Silver Ticket and the BenQ TK800M as well. Let me tell you a little bit about this project. This project was not meant to be the be all end all in terms of home theater rooms. Uh, but I had this room here, uh, which was awkward in size, and I'd used as a home gym for a while, and that didn't work out because I just couldn't go in to the gym. Uh, I would not use it that much, so I decided I would turn it into a home theater room, which is what I had planned for it. So I used couches instead of the stands of the home theater because I wanted it to feel more like a room and less like a single-purpose room. And... I have a carpet coming in, this place is almost done. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the TK800M first, this thing right here, and then the silver ticket gray screen. Before we go into the specifics of which projector I chose and which screen I chose, I think it's really good for me to just run over all of the different things that I was concerned about and what I ended up picking, and then how that reflected in my final decision. So the first thing I looked at was lumens. I knew that I was going to have some ambient lights. And so I went to a local store that did have a 3200 lumens projector and they had a 1500 lumens projector. And it was pretty clear to me that I wanted to be on the better side of 3000. But I figured anything in the 3000 range would work just fine. The next thing I really knew was that I was going to use this for gaming and a lot of gaming. In fact, that might be 50% of my usage. So for me, input lag was critical. Brands that I was really looking at was Optoma, Sony, and BenQ came in at the very end, um, almost as an afterthought. And I was actually not as convinced for several reasons. And the input lag I was really looking for was in the standard 30 milliseconds or less. But 
If you know 4K projectors today, it's not about how much money you spend. There just isn't any that will do that. Uh, the closest thing was the BenQ TK800M at 42 milliseconds. I'll stop talking for a sec so you can listen to this. So if I can play Cuphead and not have it ruin my experience, that's something worth noting. I am aware that it is running at 1080p. If you look at the F1 game, it does look like there's a little bit of lag, but when you actually play the game, you do not perceive any of that really. And I can confirm that it's almost identical to how it was when I was doing that same action on my, on my Samsung TV. Can I recommend the BenQ TK800M for gaming? Absolutely. And you can go over those videos a couple of times. If you'd like me to post more and be more thorough about it, just let me know and I'll, and I'll get all those videos up so that you can compare much better. The next thing that I really looked at was true 4K or not. Now you have your DLP uh, vibrating little pixels which will display 8 plus million pixels on screen. And honestly, as long as it was rated, you know, certified 4K, that's what I wanted. I did not want the Epson style. I know that if they had DLP technology and it wasn't the uh, quick shift or, or I think it's called 4K enhanced, uh, I, I probably would have ended up with an Epson because their input lag is really low. Uh, which takes me to what resolution I wanted. Was it going to be 2160 by 3840, which is 16 to 9 ratio, or is it uh, 2160 by 4096, which is basically what Sony does, and that's true 4K. Don't get fooled, most of the content you're going to watch is going to be 16 to 9 ratio. So the 2160 by 3840, after a bunch of research, I found out was the right choice for me. And the BenQ, as well as almost every other um, almost every other manufacturer, would work just fine. Next most important thing was the screen size, given the distance. I urge you, go on this amazing tool called ProjectorCentral.com and figure out whether or not you can achieve your uh, screen size with the distance that you're able to go back uh, in your room. Uh, the last thing you want is to be uh, is to have no leeway in where you install your projector and and not really get the screen size that you're wanting for. So do that research ahead of time before you buy and then and only then should you actually make a purchase something i really wanted as well was for it to be mounted in the back i did not care for a short throw projector that was sitting at the front i didn't want a console uh, under the screen or anything like that i simply wanted the screen to fill up most of the room and to have a clean bottom uh, unlike a tv so moving on to contrast ratio i did manage to see the uhz 65 optoma uh, laser projector rated at 3200 ANSI lumens and with a con uh, with a contrast ratio of 1.5 million to 1. Did I feel that it was about 150 times better contrast than the BenQ TK100M which is rated at 10,000 to 1? Honestly speaking, it, uh, I, I cannot say that that is how I feel or felt. Um, it definitely had better contrast, I can say that, but uh, I do not believe that the contrast ratio of the BenQ TK800M leaves anything to be desired, or let's say it doesn't leave much to be desired. Another thing I wanted to gloss over real quick was the startup time. I didn't think that the startup time was that intrusive or that it would deter me from using the projector as much as I had imagined in my head. So if that's something that's making you feel a little angst, um, I would recommend that you don't feel too much angst about it. Would I recommend the TK800M as a projector? Uh, given what's available in the market, given that now the Optoma uh, Cinemax P1 is released, which is a great short throw laser projector that requires a lot less work, etc. 
I personally love the projector that I have, and given the parameters or the constraints that I talked about, uh, especially the gaming-related constraints, which I'm really surprised that a lot of manufacturers haven't really addressed when it comes to 4K. Also, given that the PlayStation 5 and the next uh, Xbox Scarlet, I believe, is coming out within the next year or so. I think you really can't go wrong with a lot of the options. And, and what I really wanted to highlight in, in this conversation here or this uh, video here is that, is that one of the most important things when it comes to picking a projector is definitely going to be your use. So figure out exactly what it is you're going to use it for and then use that as the basis for how to select. If gaming is not going to be a big factor for you, then don't limit yourself the way I have or I had to. And on the other hand, if gaming is something really important to you, then definitely consider the TK100M.